What is going on guys? It is your boy Sensor here with a video here today bringing you guys five Photoshop tips that you guys basically use every single day. So I said I was gonna do more tip videos, totally didn't do them, but I now I'm doing one now. So ha. Huh. So hopefully you guys you know every single one of these tips in today's video. If you guys don't, well you're welcome because I guarantee you at least three of them, I'll say at least three you'll use every day. Um so yeah. Also, homies, today's video is sponsored by Wix. If you guys look at a website that gives you the creative freedom to make the site of your profession, I use it. I highly recommend it if you guys would try it out. Link in the description, and I'll talk about it more at the end of the video. Until then, let's go ahead and continue. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. So if you guys, of course, like the video, like the tips, of course, leave a like, and of course, maybe even put in your own tips in the comment section below that are not in this video that can help someone else that actually ends up reading the comments, okay? So I'll talk to you guys in a second. Hope you guys do enjoy, and I'll see you guys in a second. Again, peace. Alright homies, so the first tip is actually really really handy, it's also not even default, however if you're like me and you guys go to file, open recents to open your pre uh, previous projects, I don't know if it's 10 or 15 or so that comes up, however if you want it to be so when you guys hover over your open recents and you guys see 100 of your past projects, you can also see I've been working with a lot of PDFs, and you go to edit, preferences, File handling, and of course this number right here, whatever the default is, you change it to 99, I should, why is this not checked? Press OK, and of course when you guys close down your Photoshop, and you guys open back up, when you guys go to your open recents, it'll have your past 100 projects, which makes it super simple to find things. If you're like me and you lose a lot of stuff because you don't know where you put it, ah, got you. All right, guys, so for tip number two, it's something I basically put on maybe around a year ago, and ever since I put it on, I literally always use it. So. In my Photoshop, it's called the Navigator on the top right. You can see it right here. If you guys would like it, it's called, or excuse me, under Window Navigator, just like so, right? You kind of have it. You don't have to have it top right. I just like to have mine top right. Now, if you're like me, I want to make it a little bit more bigger, and I also like to kind of have it be around the size of a YouTube thumbnail, and I'm going to say around here is pretty good. So, YouTube thumbnail, right? This is kind of like the example here. If you work with things like YouTube thumbnails, or if you work with things that have to be viewed on mobile devices, right? You're working all that good stuff in your default view. You have like your envelope saying to courage JD, Fortnite sent me a gift, all that good stuff. Everything looks pretty good in your default view. A quick pan to the right will suggest the fact that text might not actually be as visible or an object might not be as visible as you would like it to be. So, in this instance, to courage JD on this envelope just doesn't look quite readable, right? So legible, I kind of put on this little fix and now the words to courage JD it looks a little bit more legible and this gives you a quick little fix and kind of get rid of those little issues that might pop up and of course it acts as when you guys zoom in a little navigator as well I mean literally it's called a navigator but of course you can kind of click on the actual canvas itself maybe for drawing or if you're like me I kind of pan and move things around like this you can just make it really quick for yourself and kind of just kind of drag and click and drag I mean it's something I literally use every single day and it helps me every single time when I'm kind of comparing whether the fact it's gonna look good or not it's something you guys should always use uh, if you guys are, of course, working with things like mobile and YouTube thumbnails. All right, guys, so next tip, tip number three, is for those individuals how to cut people out, have like really, really quick turnaround times. I'm gonna show you guys basically almost like three tips in one. Literally watch this, okay, ready? So let's say you have your subject and you have to really do this in like, I don't know, 10 minutes. You have a really quick turnaround time. They're like, yo, I need to cut out. We need to put this here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Except for taking literally the entire time, basically pen tooling out. Uh, it also depends on whether or not the photographer did a good job because this feature here, if you were to press W on your keyboard, now a lot of you guys might ignore these two buttons here, but they mean a lot. So if I were to just basically click select subject while I have this selected, right? You guys can see the nice little marquee tool selection actually happens to be perfectly around the actual person that is in focus now it's not perfect you can see up here on the top right his little head right here kind of has a little uh it's off right so if you guys just quickly press q on your keyboard it brings you into masking mode what i like to do is just take a brush which of course is right here right right click kind of have myself at 100 hardness and of course a pretty good small size brush if i need to make it bigger I just hold alt right click and move it right right now you just kind of click and hover over it using a black brush white of course erases uh, black will then fill back in so you guys will say hey I need to fill this right back in just like so you guys will then go all the way around and kind of make sure everything that has to be selected is selected like things like this And once you're done selecting, all you have to do now is press Q once again, have your layer selected, click on the layer mask just like so, and it'll basically cut everything out beside the subject and it looks pretty freaking good. And still, of course, if you guys wanna use your uh, your brushes and of course erase things and fill them back in, you still can do that with a black and white brush while you're selected on the actual layer mask 
um, kind of layer, right? Now, the second tip, okay? I'm gonna change my black background to a white background really quickly. And you guys will notice, no matter what, if you cut anything out via selection or even pen tooling out, sometimes, or most of the times, you guys will get this weird little outline fringing that happens on the outside of every single cutout because kind of like lights and pixels when they kind of meet each other, they kind of have this really weird texture here, just like so you can definitely see what I'm talking about here, hopefully. Now, to get rid of that, it's very, very easy. Besides actually going in, using like an eraser or your brush or whatever, you guys like kind of do like this. I did this for so long, I'm upset that I don't know. So, right now I'm gonna make a duplicate of this layer just in case I ever mess up, just like so, with Control J. Now I'm gonna hide this layer. Now, to get this back to a rasterized layer, I'm gonna right click on it, do uh, convert to smart object, just like so. Then I'm gonna right click once again and do rasterize type. Now it's all good and ready to get messed around with. So, we're gonna go to image, uh, excuse me, layer, matting, defringe, right? I would only ever do one to two pixels personally for these this kind of example here, but one pixel for here, press OK, and you guys will notice all that weird outline that's happening here looks way, way, way better, and you have a way cleaner cutout, and it doesn't look as kind of like, like kind of scratchy and whatnot, and I think this is something you guys should all definitely, definitely use, and it just makes everything just super, super easy and super fun, and also not as hassling when it comes to pen tooling things out and having quick turnaround times, wasting all your time on the pen tool. All right, guys, so tip number four has to be literally, most definitely, I'm only putting it in here to make sure you guys know what it is, and I'm praying that you guys are just like, what are you guys talking about? I know what this is, content aware. If you guys don't know what it is, I'm gonna just quickly show you guys like really quickly two use cases, right? So we have a family picture of the mob 100 thieves, right? I'm gonna go ahead and let's just say there's objects that you guys don't want to be inside something. Like right, in this case, this reef, I don't want to be there. I want there just to be plain wall. Maybe it's like a sign you want letters in, or if you want to get rid of the actual letters in a sign, something like that. You want to put them in with something different, kind of make it a little fun, whatever, right? Right? I say, okay, I don't want it. So I'm gonna go ahead, press L on my keyboard, go ahead and use the lasso tool. I'm gonna then go ahead and give myself an adequate amount of space of the uh, the surrounding the thing that I don't want. So in this case, the reef. Give a nice little, maybe like an inch or so away from the reef. Let's just say this is pretty good right here. Now, just in case you guys don't know, you can't right click and fill anything on a smart object. So make sure you guys, of course, right click, rasterize it first, right? I'm gonna right click then, fill, drop down this contents and make sure I put content aware and also make sure my opacity is at 100% here. Then I'm gonna press okay and you'll notice, yeah, like ta-da, bro, literally it's gone. And that's just, that's just literally, come on. Please, I'm begging you if you don't know what this is, I, I feel bad. So, another use case, right? Let's just say I want this picture flipped, okay? Just for whatever reason. Let's just say, even if the, the, the picture doesn't look good flipped, it doesn't really matter, he kind of looks like he's, you know? Anyway, regardless. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rasterize this. <clears throat> the only reason why I don't quite like this is simply because the logo itself on the shirt is kind of like, of course, it's flipped as well. And you guys want to make sure the logo of anything of any apparel or any brand or whatever is not flipped or messed around with any way. In this case, it definitely is. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to take this logo. Let's take this logo. I'm going to actually make a copy of it right first. Then I'm going to go ahead on this layer once again. Then I'm going to say, I want this logo basically gone. Fill, content aware. Oops, not color. Oops, I'm so used to going colored, not content aware. There we go. Okay, then right click, deselect. You see the logo's now gone with no trace of it ever being there. Put in my layer one copy. Press control T to free transform. Flip it horizontal. Then I will go ahead and take my soft brush eraser and get rid of these hard edges here. And then hopefully no one will bat an eye on the fact that the actual logo has been switched. I mean... That's just two use cases. There's really everything in the universe that content aware can do. I'm begging and just hoping that you guys know what it is. And now you know, hopefully if you didn't, thank me with like a like or something like that. Cause literally you should have known, you should have known. All right guys, now for the last tip in today's video, tip number five is basically meant for people who need to send out their PSDs to clients and stuff like that who need to clean up their actual PSDs. Let me just show you guys a really quick little menu that'll help you guys clean things out. So within Photoshop right here, I actually made a quick little project with like empty layers, clip masks and stuff like that and uh, lock layers. So basically I find myself with a lot of lock layers and empty layers inside my documents because I'd love to go ahead and like use the movement tool, hold control and like select things and like move them, right? But there's a texture above it, I'd like to lock the texture so I never click on it again kind of thing. But of course it's hard to find those things in like a hundred file or a hundred layer, 150 layer kind of document and like a whole bunch of groups. So if you guys see the word kind right here in the top right, if you guys go ahead and go to attribute, right? You can find your empty layers. You can even find the lock layers just like so very easily. You can even unlock them, of course, inside this menu. It's obviously no longer a locked layer. I can go to my empty layers. I can just go ahead, 
Go ahead and press delete on all these. Now all the empty layers are now gone. Go back to kind, and now it'll be a more of a cleaner kind of aspect of the, or excuse me, not cleaner aspect, cleaner document, which when you send it, of course, clients, then name all the stuff that you actually need to name, all that stuff. You can even find, like, of course, the clip mask ones. I think it's just a really, really cool thing to at least know that it's available to you, of course, to find, and it just makes life really, really easy. All right, guys, that's the end of the video here today. I do hope you guys enjoy the tip videos. If you guys have any other tips that you would like to get from me, of course, comment down. Maybe we can help each other. And of course, like I said before in the beginning of the video, if you guys have any tips, maybe put them down in the comment section below as well. And maybe I can like feature a new video or whatever, or maybe we can just like have a moment where we just like, ah, oh, like O's and ahs, right? So I appreciate you so very much. Of course, again, Wix for sponsoring this video here today. Once again, when it comes to Wix, you can create free amazing sites, storefronts, blogs, and much more. Starting off with their incredible range of templates as well is not a bad way to start as they are all super clean and professional so there really isn't any going wrong. As you can literally scroll through the templates and of course choose your favorite ones and of course if you like it then you can actually choose to edit it. And then of course use Wix editor then add some more imagery, some more gallery, music, photos, all that great stuff and even go ahead and add in some HTML coding if you guys wish to all for free. And if the creative freedom happens to worry you, of course, Wix has a Wix builder feature where it takes you along a few questions and style choices to actually create your own website custom to your answers. And all I have to do is actually fill in the information. If you'd like to check out more, please check the first link in the description to explore and all its free website design glory. Of course, that's what HQ.com is built with Wix. I personally love it. I couldn't be any more happy with my results as I've been personally using it for around three to four years now. It's given me no trouble. So of course, once again, Wix.com, check the first link in the description, enjoy it, and thank you very much. Sweet. So, if you guys do not know, I'm going to be going flying over to New York, and I'll be there for like a week and a half. We're going to be chilling, hanging out with family. So, of course, while that's happening, I hope you guys enjoy your holidays, Merry Christmas, all that great stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you so very much. You guys gave me an amazing career, and I want to, of course, give back as much as possible. I just love you guys so very much. I just want you guys to know that. Appreciate you, and I'll talk to you guys later. Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love.